In this video I'm going to show you how you can use checkboxes with graphs to automatically select the athletes that you want to see on a chart as well as use these same checkboxes to select the test that you want to view on your chart. This is going to be a really powerful trick if you are creating any sort of dynamic testing reports or dashboards and you want to be able to quickly and easily cycle through different athletes or different tests and see the results. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back, and in order to get this sheet started, I've just gone ahead and created some boxes where we're going to enter in our information, and then we'll get to doing the calculation. So the first thing that we need to do is just look at what our data looks like. So I have a sheet here that has some data on it, and just to orient you to it, basically what we have is one column that has all of the athlete names, athlete 1 through 10, then the dates that they perform the tests on, and then results for various different tests that we've tested. Now we're going to use this data and make this sheet completely dynamic so that as we um, upgrade our data table that all of the data automatically goes into our sheet. So the first thing we want to do is filter out all of the athlete names that are in our data sheet. So I'm going to use a formula called filter. I'll say equals filter. Open this up and what I'm going to do is select this first column here A2 to A and then I'll hit comma, and I want to select it when A2 to A does not equal blank. And basically the way that I do that is just um, a less than and greater than sign open up towards each other, and then blank is signified by two exclamation, or uh, two quotation marks. So when I hit enter, you're going to see um, that I've typed this in wrong. We should have A2 to A on both of them, and it's basically going to return all of the names. Now from there, I only want each name to be returned once. So what I can do here is just wrap this formula in a formula called unique, U-N-I-Q-U-E. And when I close this off, you can see that it will only return unique values. In this case, we have 10 different athlete names. So that's part one. Now we're going to add our checkboxes so that we have something to actually select from. So underneath select, what I'll do is just highlight these cells and I'll hit insert and then checkbox. And the cool thing about checkbox is when we select them, they have a value of true. And when they are not selected, they have a value of false. So we will be using that in some of our formulas moving forward. Now for tests, we want to actually do the exact same thing for our tests. We'll go filter, open this up. And in this case, I want to select the test names but I want to go basically from where the test starts. So let's say C1 all the way to 1 and then comma. And I want to do that when C1 all the way to 1 does not equal blank. The same thing that we just did. But what you'll notice is because I've selected a row, my return values are also in a row. So I'm going to have to just use the transpose function. So I'll say transpose. And what that function does is it just takes a row and turns it into a column or a column and turns it into a row. So there you go. Um, when I wrap that function in there, now you can see we have all of our tests and they are basically um, in a column order. Now the same thing here, we will insert our checkboxes and this is now the way that we will select our test. And then finally to set up our sheet, what we want to be able to do is I want to select a test and have it appear here. So for that, I'm going to use um, another filter and I'll say equals filter, open this up and I want to select from these tests and then I want to do it when this is true. And because this already has a value of true, I don't need to put anything else in there. And now as I select different tests, the one that's in the orange box is the one that we're going to do our calculation off of. And because this has an error, if I just wrap this in an if error, and then if there is an error, we'll say comma, make it blank, and I'll hit enter, and now it'll show nothing. So for right now, what we have is the ability to select what test we want, and then we will do the same thing for what athletes are selected. So from there now, we have to now pull out the data that we want in order to do our calculation. So the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to pull out any date that has a test for any athlete that I've selected. 
So to pull out all of the dates, what I'm going to do is use that filter function again. So what I'm going to type is equals filter, open this up, and what I want to filter for is the dates. So the first thing we'll do is go filter B2 to B, and we want to filter it all the way down, and then comma, the first condition that we want is B2 to B does not equal blank. So that's condition number one. Then the second condition that we want is actually a match. So what we're going to match for is another filtered list of all of the values that have a true beside them from our athlete list. So we'll say match, open this up. We're going to say A2 to A. And then the second thing for the match is what we're matching to. And what we're going to match to is another filter of these values here. So A2 to A on this, um, on this sheet. And we want to do that when... B2 to B equals true, and what I'll do is close that filter off, and then comma zero at the end of this match, and then I'll close the whole thing off and hit enter, and now what you'll see is I'll basically get all of the dates for all of the athletes that I select, and again, like we did with the names, we will have duplicates of some of these dates in there. So the next thing that I want to do is add a unique to this, unique, and then I'll block that off. And then finally, what I want to do here is just add an if error. Um, for example, if we have nothing selected, it's just going to go show an ugly error. So we'll wrap this formula in an if error, I-F-E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. And then if there is an error, comma, and then double quotations, and then close that off. So now that we have all of the dates, the next thing that I want to do is filter out all of the names of athletes that are selected. So up in this top box here, what I'll say is equals filter. Open this up, and I want to filter out all of these values when these values close that off. But I want them going across the top here, so I'm going to transpose those and then close that off. Oh, I think I just spelled transpose wrong. T-R-A-N-S, transpose. And now I have them going across the top. So now what I want to do is actually fill in all of these values. So I'm going to just select all of the athletes, so we'll have up to 10. Now the way that I can fill in these values is with a formula called VLOOKUP. But I want to only type it in and have it calculate all the way down. So I'm going to have to use a formula with it called array formula. So this is a pretty complicated formula. I'm going to try to walk you through it. So what we'll do is go equals array formula. And I'm going to open this up. And the first thing I'm going to put in there is an if error. Or sorry, an if function. So I'll say if. Open this up. And then we're going to use a function called len. Open this up. And basically what's len's doing is I'm just going to check whether there is a value in this G column here. And as long as there is, then I want to perform this next calculation. The reason we have to put that in there is because um, it would really ruin the sheet if it tried to keep calculating forever for um, thousands and thousands of rows if there was nothing in this um, column. So this just stops the formula from working um, and saves some space in the actual spreadsheet. So from there, the next thing I want is a VLOOKUP. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually look up for two values at the same time. The first one being um, H1, which is the name. And then the second one being all of these values here on the side, so G2 to G. So by using an AND symbol, what I'm doing is actually stitching these two values together. And then when I go to search, I'm going to search the two columns and it's going to stitch them together and, and turn them into one value. So from there, it's going to ask me where I want to look for them. I'm going to open a squiggly bracket because I'm about to start um, an array of functions here or array of um, uh, columns. So the first one is going to be this first column. So data A2 to A and data B2 to B. So we're going to search in both of these at the same time and then the final thing is we're going to basically search the rest of the columns and I'll close that off and then at the end of our VLOOKUP it's going to ask us 
where we want to look for it. And for that, we're going to match for the value of the test that we've selected. So that is stored in F2. I'm going to lock that in with F4. And I want to search for that basically along this top here. And I'm going to lock that in because I know that that is never going to change. I'm going to lock all of these in actually. Um, yep, so lock all of that in. I know that that's never going to change, so comma zero. And then I'm going to also subtract one. Because we've stitched these two together, it's going to treat it as one column. So if I'm treating this as one, when I return the column that I want, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. If I didn't stitch them together, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going to always think that it's one more than it actually is. And then um, comma false for the VLOOKUP. And I'll close that off. And then if it wasn't true, then we just want to return um, a blank. And when I hit enter, if I've typed this in right, it should work. Um, but we're getting an, we're getting an error here, so let me just troubleshoot this for one sec. Oh, it's because we've gone C to G instead of C two to G. And when I close this off, so one thing to note is all of your um, when we're looking at data, all of our arrays have to start at the same thing. So we're always starting at the second row. So then the last thing to do here is just wrap this in an if error. So just before the if, we'll type if error. Open this up. And then right before that ends, we'll just type comma, double quotations. And that will just ensure, so for example, athlete one for trap bar deadlift is 281. But if we take that date out, what we're going to get back is a blank value and not just an error all the way down. So we'll put that date back and we'll get all of our values. Now, because we've locked all of these in, we should be able to just drag this across and it should auto populate for all of ours. And then what's cool is now as I remove different athletes, it's going to either add or subtract their values. Now from there, the last thing to do is I'm just going to select all of these cells and hit insert chart. And it's going to create this kind of ugly looking chart, but we'll try to clean it up a little bit. One thing I'm going to do is make it quite a bit bigger. And then from there, what I'll do is go to setup. Let's make it um, a combo chart, and we're going to use columns as labels. Customize chart style, we'll put compare mode on, and maybe we'll maximize it. And then from chart and series, what we'll go is apply to all series. We'll say line, and then we'll make it dashed lines with a point. And now we can kind of see those points. And maybe we'll turn the line opacity down just a little bit. And then maybe just to make it a little bit nicer, we'll just give it kind of a light gray color on the back. So that's really it. Um, now we should be able to basically select athletes and their series will basically disappear from our chart. And then as we want to view them, we can just select them. Maybe we want to change the test. We just select a new test from our list of tests here and it will automatically update to review that. And because we have compare mode on, if I actually click into this on any date, you can just select that, so that date and see what all of the different athletes did on that date. So I hope this video helps you out. And if it does, please like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps the channel grow. And if you have ideas for future videos, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.